on Prime Crime. Chickasaw County, 911. Yeah, I'm doing out here. It's a scene straight from a nightmare. What I took away was the pain and the trauma of the first responder. That person's life is never going to be the same again. And all eyes on a concerning couple. Were you at any time that someone was like aware that that was uh, a condition that you had? No. His accent and it's not my fault. I didn't really even challenge Cheyenne in the interview. We had no idea. It was far worse than that. Hey there, everybody. I'm Jesse Weber, and welcome to Prime Crime. This is where we do a deeper dive into the most high-profile and memorable true crime cases. A death in an Iowa home leads to many questions and a horrifying outcome. Chickasaw County, 911. It's August 30th, 2017 in Iowa. Zachary Keene, a father of two young children, calls 911 and reveals a terrifying discovery. Okay, what's going on? Uh, around nine, my girlfriend went to uh, feed our son, and then uh, about 11 or, or 11.30, she went to check on him, and he was gone. Gone, meaning? He died. It's this statement that would begin the investigation into the death of four-month-old Sterling Keene, who would be found dead in his swing. What I took away was the pain and the trauma of the first responder. That person's life is never gonna be the same again after seeing that close up and having been someone as a former prosecutor who went to a, a, a plethora of crime scenes, right? But to see a helpless child in that state is just a whole new level. She was a check on her, never been cry or whatever, and she passed away. Typically, if a person is going to dial 911 after their child is dead, they would be panicking or they would be in shock. In this case, Zach acted what I like to call desperately casual. And this is a red flag. His neighbor was actually the one that had to tell him to call 911 because he was just standing outside of their apartment complex. So this was not rational decision making. When responders showed up that Zachary was muttering he was casual in his demeanor. He was quiet. There was no tear to be seen. It was later argued that he was in shock in this moment, but shock doesn't look like this. It's particularly interesting what Keene says about the potential cause of death. I don't know if it's sudden death syndrome or what. Zach's comments about sudden infant death could be a, a viable consideration. Whenever somebody loses a child, especially a young child like Sterling. That's something that we would consider. Police, though, need more answers. Hours after Sterling's death, Special Agent Chris Calloway spoke with Cheyenne Harris, Keene's girlfriend and the mother of Sterling, as well as the couple's daughter, two-year-old Nala. Do you remember putting Sterling in this way? There was a detachment when talking about Sterling. She lit up when she was talking about her daughter, uh, when she was talking about her, her, her dog. Um, but but the, the comments about Sterling, uh, there was maybe a coldness. Every time he crapped, it was straight liquid. Okay. I actually had a diaper where there was no crab in it, and I was amazed. Yeah. How could you tell when he was uncomfortable. Close, I guess. Okay. That's pretty much all we could do. Harris explains the moments leading up to finding Sterling dead. So Nala wakes up around noon. What happens next? I got up and changed her diaper. Went to the bathroom myself. I fed her. And then I got her set up in the living room to watch the movie for a little bit. What did you feed her? Do you remember? Cooked cheese. <laughs> That's okay. And started thinking. It's been a while since I heard from Sterling. What happened next? I know I've been found out. And I don't know. Let me walk up to Callaway goes through different possible scenarios. No illegal drugs in the house or, or no medication that you know of that 
that Sterling could have gotten into or found or ingested. Okay. Initially, you go into these child death investigations with an open mind, open mind to it, it could be something medical, it could be something uh, criminal. While crossing off these potential options, what does become clear is something feels a bit off. When you found Sterling, did, um, did you take him out of the swing or did he, is he still in the swing? He was still in the swing. Okay. Then what happens after you get that? After some freaking out and having no idea what to do or say, he called me and I don't think she really understood the full gravity of what she was facing and what and, and, and what had happened to her child. Coming up, new details come to light that change everything. But I didn't know the, the scope and magnitude of, of Sterling's condition. And so she's describing these as very matter of fact. Accident. It's not my fault. Is it is it unusual to go that long without checking? In 2017, Iowa police are called to the residence of Zachary Keene and his girlfriend Cheyenne Harris. They find the dead body of the couple's four-month-old son Sterling lying in his swing. It's not immediately clear how Sterling died. Yet when Harris speaks with Special Agent Chris Calloway, some of the pieces of the puzzle start to fill in. Well, just tell me, like, um, Sterling's schedule. He normally was able to sleep through the night with no problem. Okay. Where was Sterling? In the next bedroom in the swing. Okay. So Sterling was in the swing, but it, the swing wasn't moving at that point. Is it possible that this couple just accidentally forgot about their baby son in his swing? Would that have been, around what time would that have been when you got him the bottle and changed him? And I'm honestly not sure what time. When was Zach's last contact with Sterling? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. How exactly could that happen? This becomes all the more complicated when you dig into the lives of Harris and Keene. Overall, Zach and Cheyenne, they were just an irresponsible couple. They would do meth together. They came together based on their drug use, not love. She continued to use methamphetamine after Sterling was born. When Sterling was born, they found methamphetamine um, in his blood. Drug use in general affects a person's decision making and can make it more difficult for a person to think clearly. It's, it can increase distractibility, reduce motor speed. Overall, when you're saying yes to using meth, you're saying no to being a good parent. After everything that's happened, and all I can think about is that. Yeah, well, and you're juggling a ton of stuff. I mean, you know, a lot of things going on. Diane has been a mother before, and so she should have known how to care for her child. Zach made anywhere between $35,000 to $45,000 a year. He found money to spend on methamphetamine, but did not have the money, allegedly, to spend on the special formula that their baby needed. Their friends would come over, but they had no idea that they even had a baby. So overall, these were two people who were not proud to have a small baby. Does he, does he help you at all with the child care? Is that? No, I don't. He doesn't have a stomach for um, diaper changing. His viewpoint was very much that the man goes out and goes to work and does not have anything to do with the home front. Like basically, I'm bringing home the money, you take care of the child and you take care of the house. And that's why he was just not engaged when it came to parenting young Sterling. The issues in their parenting became even more apparent when we learned about Sterling's birth during a party. Spend all day trying to go to the bathroom. Cramps got worse and worse and worse. Pushing feels not the way that it normally does. I go to stand up and there's a bullet and I'm like, oh my God. There's a head. So I sit back down on the to toilet, scream for Zach. He came out in the water and he was just 
eyes popped open and he was just scaring me. Oh. We wrapped him up and we waited for the ambulance. The mother literally didn't realize she was in labor and, and she was at a party and literally gave birth in the bathtub of the people's house. Should you have been at the party? <laughs> Let's kind of start with that. And then, you know, secondly, obviously that lack of awareness about your body and the fact that you're, you know, going into labor, you know, that's already setting the child up for a very problematic life. I can't help but feel that I should have done something differently or that I should have checked on her more. Is it, is it unusual? to go that long without checking? He always lets me know when he needs something, so I didn't think anything of it. Sure. When we return, we'll get an answer as to what actually happened to Sterling. I didn't really even challenge Cheyenne in the interview. I didn't know the condition of Sterling at the time. We had no idea. It was far worse than that. We're gonna be looking at your house and we're gonna be taking things from the guys. And so this is gonna go on for a while. But the idea is to get, to get you guys the truth and the answers that you need. In 2017, Zachary Keene and his girlfriend Cheyenne Harris tell police they were shocked to find their four-month-old son Sterling dead in his swing. Harris would explain to investigator Chris Calloway that she fed Sterling. How many feedings would Sterling have a day? But normally it would be three or four of the eight ounce things. Okay. And Sterling's room seemed to be fine. How warm was the room? It was comfortable. It didn't seem too hot to me. Yet it soon becomes clear that things aren't adding up and that the couple who struggled with substance abuse hadn't checked on Sterling for quite some time. I didn't have any preconceived notion about what had happened. And as she started talking, I was just left with that, that, uh, that gap in, in time. I mean, okay, so we're looking at 19 hours with no care of a newborn. If you were to predict what the doctors will find, what do you think? They... So I keep saying, uh, sorry about sudden death syndrome. Okay overall wasn't very well thought through. This just doesn't add up with, with sudden infant death syndrome. There's something else to know about Sterling's death, something that would make this case stand out from many others. Sterling wasn't just found dead in his swing, but his room was in fact extremely hot and smelled of urine. And one of the most disturbing revelations, the infant's diaper was filled with maggots. Sterling was taken to our state medical examiner's office where an autopsy was done and cause of death was denial of critical care and uh, the manner of death was, was considered homicide. He, I believe, was an etymologist who spoke extensively about, you know, the fact that the flies that and the maggots that were on baby Sterling's body, he was able to track back and say, you know, listen, based on where the eggs were in their development, how the flies were in their development, we can say that, you know, this had been going on and this child had been in the state for close to two weeks. How did the child stay in a swing for two weeks without diaper being changed, anyone checking on him? That, that, that's just beyond the pale. According to the autopsy, Sterling died from a combination of malnutrition, dehydration, and an E. coli infection. Ultimately, both Keene and Harris were arrested and charged with first-degree murder and child endangerment. I think that drug use, along with mental health, contributed to this, but I think it goes deeper than that with this couple. There is an absolute lack of empathy towards their child. You could argue that there's some dis disorder or that they're disturbed mentally, but there's also an element of evil here. It takes conscious effort to do this. Up next, Keen and Harris each go to trial and try to convince jurors they're not murderers. Did you know that the Sterling had not been changed for some time? I did not. Did you want to see Sterling? Of course not. Did you want your son to die? I did not. 
think all court shows are the same? We're talking about your father. Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Think again. Judge Caprio rules with common sense. I was having contractions. I was rushing to the hospital. Inspector Quinn, what does justice demand? Jail? <laughs> and compassion. I'm going to take the circumstances into consideration. The best court experience I've had. Clearly, Judge, he's been in a court before. Get caught in Providence. Hi, I'm Dan Abrams. In the exploding legal and true crime genre, Law & Crime is the only network that has it all. Good evening and welcome. This is a complicated case. Don't really jump to conclusions. Welcome to Prime Crime Tonight. Another day of drama between both sides. From multiple live trials daily to original and compelling programming, the Law & Crime Network is everywhere. And we invite you inside the jury box. This is Law & Crime. How has uh, Sterling's appetite been the last day, couple days? Their feedings. Class appetite. Okay. In Iowa, parents Zachary Keene and Cheyenne Harris are facing murder and child endangerment charges in connection with the death of their four-month-old son Sterling. Forensic evidence, including the presence of maggots in the infant's diaper, suggests Sterling hadn't been fed nor changed in two weeks and was left to die in his swing. The couple were tried separately. First up was Keen. Little Sterling couldn't feed himself. He couldn't change his diaper. He was vulnerable as only an infant can be. The evidence in this case will show by his actions, he directly caused Sterling's death. He told the dispatcher that his son had died of SIDS, or sudden infant death syndrome. That's not what happened in this case. This was not an accident. That was a cover story concocted by this defendant to cover the awful truth. And he's going to talk about the evidence. Why this is a tragedy but not a crime. And we're going to ask you to return a verdict to not guilty. In a case with such horrid details, many wondered how could the defense explain this away? Well, Zachary Keene himself tried to do just that when he took the stand. Cheyenne Harris, the mother. Were you at any time or in your son's life aware that that was a condition he was in? No. You knew that he was not being fed. What would you have done? I would have fed him, for sure. I uh, had trusted her judgment. I mean, look at my daughter. She's very healthy, and so I, I trusted her. He totally was blaming her and being like, I trusted the wrong person. At the end of the day, it's both of you. Because you're both the parents and you both live in this tiny house. Him trying to blame her and her trying to blame him just made the jury more enraged. State of Iowa versus Zachary Kane, verdict form count one. We the jury find the defendant guilty of murder in the first degree. Count two, we the jury find the defendant guilty of child endangerment causing the death of a child. Defend then there was Cheyenne Harris's trial. But this is not a case where the parent, uh, Ms. Harris, lacked resources or was an inexperienced parent. The other child in the home, her name is Nala. The evidence will show that she was healthy in contrast to Sterling. In contrast to Sterling, she was properly clothed and clean and bathed. She was properly fed. That child's mother, Cheyenne Harris, failed in her responsibility as a parent. She failed little Sterling. She violated the trust that Sterling placed in her as her mother. You're going to wonder what kind of monster could do something like this. The monster in this case is mental health. The monster in this case is depression, postpartum, substance abuse. She's not evil. 
and this, is, this case is not murder. It was an extremely difficult case to try. I think it was a situation where Cheyenne was suffering from postpartum depression, as well as substance abuse, and then adding in a father who wasn't claiming this baby. And so I think that's why the older child, Nala, was cared for and the younger child was kind of just left to the side and it just spiraled down from there. I certainly had evidence of the use of methamphetamine, a prolonged use of methamphetamine, meth causing that disconnect and you lose your understanding of time. It shows that she was really disconnected from reality. They didn't have anything to show that she had actual hate for this child or any reason to suspect that she wanted the baby to die. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of murder in the first degree. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of child endangerment causing the death of a child. We were hamstrung by Iowa's uh, felony murder rule as it relates to a certain form of child endangerment if it's proven that they don't have to prove premeditation. And what that did is it gutted our ability to argue anything along the lines of specific intent. They don't like the felony murder rule. Murder should be reserved for the worst of the worst. And Cheyenne is far from that. Both Harris and Keene were sentenced to life in prison. And at the time of this taping, each of their appeals have been shot down. It's never going to bring Sterling back. It's never going to diminish the, the horrendous, miserable um, last days of his life. Uh, but you can hold uh, Zach and Cheyenne accountable and uh, in, in a, a small case prevent this from ever happening again. It's tough to work these types of cases, but it is important that the truth comes out. Cheyenne Harris and Zachary Keene failed to show their infant son the attention and care he deserved. Yet as they sit in prison, seemingly for the rest of their lives, you have to imagine that Sterling will be on their minds day after day after day. That's all we have for you here on Prime Crime. Leave us your comments on Instagram and Twitter with the hashtag Prime Crime. As always, thank you for joining us, and until next time, be safe.